What's up, people? It's your girl, Adeola. As you guys know, at least 110 farmers were slaughtered over the weekend while they were harvesting their crops in Koshobe and in some other villages in Jere local government area. This is near Maiduguri, by the way, the capital of Bono. First of all, I don't know why a lot of media are still reporting 43 people, and especially the presidential spokesperson is insisting that it's only 43 people, despite reports of eyewitnesses saying it's more than 110 people. The government is sad that this uh, tragic uh, incident has happened. 43 or thereabouts uh, of innocent uh, farm workers Okay, I, I don't know why he keeps insisting that it's 43 people. I don't know why, but Nigerian government has a problem with telling the truth. What does it mean by 43 or there about? We're talking about human lives here. Th this is so pathetic. So if you live in Nigeria, I don't know what you were doing last Saturday. Maybe you were attending a wedding or you were home resting. But in the same country, at least 110 human beings harvesting their crops, trying to provide for their family members, were being slaughtered that same Saturday. Let us sink in. Because as Nigerians, I feel like sometimes we don't always care until we're directly affected by something. Two things are bothering me though and the first one is the fact that within a week, once again Nigerians will move on and act like nothing happened. You don't even see the outrage. It's mind-boggling. How is it possible that this many people will be slaughtered in a country and a lot of people are not even angry? The second thing that bothers me is the fact that the Nigerian government does not want to defeat Boko Haram. Well, it doesn't look like they want to. Number one, the Nigerian government is not going after sponsors of Boko Haram don't know their sponsors. Even if it's possible for the country or for not the country, the, the operations seem to know. They will be tracked, they will be traced. We have the arm of the intelligence vision said I should do that. Including the alleged founder of Boko Haram, that is former governor of Borno State, Alimodu Sharif. Former governor of the now troubled and ravaged Borno State, Alimodu Sharif, and former army chief, Azubike Ihejirika were accused by an Australian hostage negotiator of being sponsors of the Boko Haram sect. The man is still living freely with hundreds of police and soldiers guiding him, protecting him. He buried his father this year in a huge celebration. When was the last time that you heard that Nigeria arrested any Boko Haram sponsor? Meanwhile, Dubai sentenced six Boko Haram sponsors to prison. Surajo Abubakar, Mohammed, and Saleh Yusuf Adamu were both sentenced to life in prison. Also, Ibrahim Ali Hassan, Abdurrahman Ado Musa, Bashar Ali Yusuf, and Muhammad Ibrahim Isa were each sentenced to 10 years in prison in Dubai. These people have allegedly transferred 782,000 US dollars from Dubai to Nigeria to support Boko Haram. That's about 300 million naira. The same UAE court alleged that from their investigations, Boko Haram uses undercover agents in Nigeria. They named some of them. One of them they said is Alaji Saidu, who they said is allegedly based in Nigeria. And they said this is the person responsible for facilitating the group's access to to funds from the sponsors. They also mentioned another man, Alaji Ashiru, who is allegedly a Nigerian government official and senior undercover Boko Haram member, who allegedly facilitates the transfer of misappropriated public funds to Boko Haram. And I was surprised by what the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice, that is Abba Kamalami, said. He said that he has written the UAE asking for details. I'm like, wait, what? He also expressed concerns on whether this convict got fair hearing. I'm like, how can the government Government of other countries care more about the activities of Boko Haram than our own government if our government really wants to end Boko Haram. The people that were wiring the money from Dubai must have been working with some people on ground. I don't think Boko Haram members were going to collect the money themselves. Why hasn't the Nigerian government investigated those who have been working with the people that were sending money from Dubai? Also, it's so alarming that this is what the Attorney General had to say. What does it mean by asking them for more details? Obviously, some people in Nigerian government are covering up for people that they know who are part of the Boko Haram sponsorship. I mean, look at Chad. Their president led the Chadian army to fight Boko Haram. They killed more than 1,000 Boko Haram members. Chad! Chad killed more than 1,000 Boko Haram members. Makes you wonder how many are these Boko Haram members. There must be thousands of them. But not only is the Nigerian government refusing to go after their sponsors, the Nigerian government is intentionally under-equipping their own soldiers so that Boko Haram can kill our soldiers at will. I mean, barely two years ago, at least 100 Nigerian soldiers were killed by Boko Haram on the military base. You know, it's one thing for soldiers to be killed, but for soldiers to be killed on their own base. Do you remember how the soldiers complained bitterly that time? Imagine, they are killing us every day. 
the soldier will be in the war front. No helmet, no fragmented jacket, no enough ammunition. We are fighting to defend our country. The generals are shitting us. Wow. You know they have no weapons and no food, no medical treatment. And when they get injured, they have to treat themselves. Remember that some of the soldiers would be voted because of this. Wow. Meanwhile, Buhari's government keeps rewarding what they call repentant Boko Haram members, which is why I don't believe that this government really wants to end Boko Haram. They hold ceremonies for them. They give them money. They promise to send some of them abroad for education. These were Boko Haram members that have killed innocent people. Meanwhile, this is not done for the soldiers who are risking their lives every day so many of whom have been killed by Boko Haram and their family members are not even looked after. Not only is Buhari's government rewarding terrorists, this government has the audacity to blame the slaughtered farmers in Bornu for their death. Presidential spokesperson Gaba Shewu said that the farmers didn't get military clearance before they went to harvest their crops. It sounds like you are, maybe without meaning to, you're putting the blame on the farmers for going into this area. Not exactly, but the truth has to be said. Was there any clearance by the military which is in total control of those areas? Wow. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. The insensitivity of these people amazed me. This local government that we're talking about is just like 15 kilometers to Maiduguri, the capital. As in, what the heck? It's not as if they traveled miles and miles away. Also, this place is like so close to the biggest Air Force base in Nigeria. How is it possible that there were military installments and then they have what they call the military camps, the big military camps, not too far from where these people were slaughtered? How is it that the farmers are the ones being blamed for harvesting their crops. I've been to my degree. It's not as if these people went out of their way to harvest their crops. And the third reason why I believe that this government is not ready to end Boko Haram is that the military is infiltrated by Boko Haram members. And the government knows this and they're not doing anything about it. Remember when Chibo girls were kidnapped? In 2014, US President Obama sent soldiers to go and help Nigeria in defeating Boko Haram and rescuing the girls. We're sending in a team made up of our military and law enforcement and other experts. Uh, obviously what's happening is awful. And as, as the father of two girls, I can't imagine what the parents are going through. Um, but this organization, Boko Haram, has been one of the worst regional or local terrorist organizations in the world. However, there were concerns at that time. U.S. intelligence complaining that there were moles among Nigerian soldiers, that once they planned an attack on Boko Haram to rescue the girls, that somehow Boko Haram would know what they had planned and Boko Haram would be ready for them. And then in October of the same 2014, the Nigerian army announced that they've arrested several soldiers who were discovered to be leaking vital security information on their strategies and tactics to Boko Haram. So they confirmed what the U.S. said, that there were moles among the soldiers. That was 2014. Either they didn't arrest all the moles or they have new ones that have been recruited because till now Boko Haram continues to outsmart our soldiers. But in the face of all this obvious evidence to support the fact that Buhari's government is not interested in defeating Boko Haram, you guys will not believe that over and over again, Buhari's government has said that they've defeated Boko Haram. They keep saying it. Meanwhile, Boko Haram continues to strike and kill people. And this is the same attitude that this government has with herdsmen who are also killing farmers. Remember how they were going to establish Ruga for the herdsmen until Nigerians cried out. I said all this because I personally, I don't believe that Nigeria is willing or ready to fight or defeat Boko Haram, but I'm willing to hear otherwise if anyone disagrees. So despite what happened to these farmers last weekend, this may not be the end of search. In the meantime, let me just give you some numbers. So according to the Global Terrorist Index, at least 37,000 people have been killed since the insurgency started as of 2019. And they said that this number has risen by 177% between last year and now. That may go well with what the governor of Bono is saying, that at least 100,000 people have been killed by Boko Haram. Not only that, the economic impact according to the UNDP is that Boko Haram insurgency has cost Nigeria at least 97 billion US dollars. That's 22,000 times higher than the cost of terrorism to Burkina Faso, 19 times greater than that of Libya. This is a serious issue, which is why I don't believe that Buhari's government is willing to end it. But again, what do I know? This is so personal to me because I've been to Bono and I've seen how 
how those other IDP camps, I've seen how they live. Remember you guys contributed money for us to ship in a container of food to Bono and to visit them and, and to see how they're living. Like it's like a drop in bucket if you if you could see how people are living. And a lot of these people were well to do, just living on their farms. They had enough food. They were living happy lives and suddenly their lives were turned around. And so the truth of the matter is it doesn't matter how many aid people send there. If the government is not willing to end it, it's just going to be like an endless cycle, you know. Once again, our hearts goes out to all the family members of those who lost their loved ones over this weekend. Let me know what you guys think about this. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Everybody knows it was started in Borno by the then Borno governor, Ali Sharif. He is still roaming the streets freely. I remember Jonathan was spending two billion naira every day on security. But there was no security. Hundreds and thousands of our people were slaughtered. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, please make sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.